Welcome back everybody. Moving on to another example. We now are going to be dealing with a double inequality and we haven't dealt with these in the video before. We did a bunch of linear inequalities but never a double inequality. Notice how there are two of uh, these inequality symbols. So these double inequalities they're a little bit more complex but not too bad. Basically what you want to do or what I like to do rather you don't have to do it this way. There's multiple ways to do it. But the way I like to do it, I like to split it up into two cases. So I like to take this as a single inequality, solve that, and then I like to take this single uh, inequality and then solve that and then combine the solutions for both of those. So starting off with this one, distribute that negative 3 inside, negative 3x plus 6. As I mentioned, with linear inequalities, you want to try to bring all of the variables to the side where they'll end up being positive. So notice we have this negative 3x. Let's bring it over and make it positive. Then this negative 4 comes over, becomes positive. And the reason why you want to try to have these x values positive, so when we isolate for it, when we divide by that coefficient in front, we don't have to worry about flipping the sign. Because if this was negative, we would have to flip the sign. And then that's just another thing to keep in mind. And it increases the chance to make a mistake. So the solution to this inequality, this linear inequality, is x is less than or equal to 10 over 3. Okay, so now let's solve this one. So same thing, distribute inside the negative 3, less than or equal to 5. Let's bring this negative 3x over, bring this positive 5 over. So 6 minus 5, less than or equal to positive 3x, 1 less than or equal to 3x, divide both sides by 3. So the solution to this is x has to be greater than or equal to 1 over 3. So the solution to this one is x has to be greater than or equal to 1 over 3, and here x has to be less than or equal to 10 over 3. And notice how these two can combine to make one solution. We can combine these by saying x has to be between 1 over 3 and 10 over 3 because the x values have to be greater than or equal to 1 over 3, but they have to be less than or equal to 10 over 3. And notice how that makes sense because 1 over 3 is less than or equal to 10 over 3. So this here is a valid solution. And that there is the solution to this double inequality here. We basically combine these. Now, there is a chance that you can get non-valid solutions for double inequality. So for example, let's say that the solution to this one, just as an example, let's say that x has to be less than or equal to 2. And this one was x has to be greater than or equal to 3. Well, is there a way to combine these two? Can the x value be both less than or equal to 2 and greater than or equal to 3? No, that's impossible. There's no number that would work combining both of these. So if you got answers like that for both of these, then you know that the double inequality you'd be working with would have no solution. However, with these numbers, these make sense. 1 over 3 is like 0.33, and then 10 over 3 is 3.33. So x being greater than or equal to 0.33 and less than or equal to 3.33, that makes sense. So this here is a valid solution. Now, there are multiple ways to express this solution. So this is an interval notation. 
You can also express this solution with set notation. So let's maybe do that up here. So let's rewrite this one over three x is greater than that and then less than or equal to 10 over 3. You can express that in set notation. So x can be an element from 1 over 3 to 10 over 3. And those are square brackets because notice that we have the equal signs as well. If there were no equal signs, so if it was just x is greater than 1 over 3 but less than 10 over 3, so there was no equal sign like that, then these would be circle brackets. Or sometimes you may even get inequalities where one is a greater than or equal to sign and then this one would just be a less than sign. That means this would be a square bracket, this would be a circle bracket. But since both of them have that equal sign, both are square brackets. So interval notation, set notation, and then you can also show this solution on a number line. So if we have a number line, let's say here the value is 0, 1 over 3, 10 over 3, and then it's all of the x values in between those. And notice because it's inclusive of the 1 over 3 and the 10 over 3, we shade those values in. Again, if those equal signs weren't there, these would be circle brackets, and then these here would be open dots because it wouldn't be inclusive of 1 over 3 and 10 over 3. But because it is, those dots are filled in. So this double inequality, we got this solution, and there are three different ways to show it. Interval notation, set notation, and a number line.